In this video, I'm going to share some strategies for writing chord progressions quickly and effectively. Along with that, I'll be briefly touching on a way that you can approach chord progressions that will help you convey the kind of emotions you're looking for in your music. As a disclaimer, there are countless strategies for writing chord progressions, and even more ways of making your music sound emotional. The strategies in this video are not all-encompassing and shouldn't be treated as rules set in stone, but rather as helpful suggestions. But with all of that being said, they can certainly be super valuable for getting started, especially when you're stuck with writer's block. So let's get started by talking about emotions in chord progressions. As you can see, I've written out a few different chord progressions on the screen. Each of them contains only four chords, each chord lasts only a single measure, and each of them are taken from the same major key, the key of C major. Yet despite these similarities, each of them has a completely different personality and emotional feel to them. For example, this first one has a jaunty, happy feel to it. This next one sounds a little more melancholy, but still really hopeful. And finally, the third one sounds the saddest of them all, though it's still not completely depressing. Each of these has their own emotional feel because the overall personality of a chord progression comes from the personalities of the chords that make it up. In other words, if we consider major chords to be happy and minor chords to be sad, the more major chords in a chord progression, the more uplifting it will sound, while the more minor chords you have, the more somber it will feel. This first chord progression sounds the happiest because it consists entirely of major chords. It only uses C major, F major, and then G major. The second chord progression gets its melancholy feeling from the one minor chord that sits in there, but it maintains its hopeful feel because the minor chord is immediately followed by two major chords. The final chord progression sounds the saddest because it has the most minor chords. It splits the ratio evenly between two major chords, one on each end, and two minor chords in the middle. So the takeaway from all of this is that when you're writing a chord progression, first think of what kind of emotion you want to carry. Then select your chords so that the ratio of major to minor and the order you put them in can help portray the emotion in the story it tells. For example, if I want my chord progression to be predominantly happy, but with a tinge of sadness to add a little more depth, I might decide on a progression with four chords, three of which will be major and one of which will be minor. If I decide that I want the minor chord to stick out a bit more and bring more weight to it, I'll put it in the second half so that it's one of the last chords I hear. So our chord progression might look like this, C major, F major, D minor, and then G major. So now that we're aware of this approach, let's talk about how you can actually go about writing a chord progression. Fortunately, this part is pretty easy. The strategy is pretty much the same for both major and minor keys, so we'll start off with working with a major key, and then I'll show you how it can work in a minor key. Since we're working with the key of C major, the chords we can choose from are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, right back to C major again. So step one is to start the progression with the first chord of our key, which helps establish which key we're working with and give the progression a nice strong start. So we'll start with C major. Step two is to put in any chord that can help you achieve your emotional goal for the progression, except try to avoid the diminished seventh, since it's a really tricky chord to work with. So I'm going to throw in an A minor and a G major. The final step, step three, is to end your progression on either the major fourth or the major fifth of the key, which will help give your progression a feeling of finality. Ending on the five will give your progression a nice strong and solid ending, while ending on the major fourth will give your progression a weaker, more subtle ending. 
I'm going to go with the major fourth and end on an F major. And there we go, a super simple but effective chord progression to use. And with a little voice leading, it sounds even better. If we want to keep developing it, we can try changing the tempo, the length of our chords, the number of chords in the progression, or even repeat a few of the chords in the middle. You can do whatever you want with it, but as long as you follow these guidelines, whatever you write will sound good. If you're writing with a minor key, the rules are pretty much the same. Start the progression with the first chord of the key. Slap in any chord from the key that you like, except the diminished chord, which is the second chord in a minor key. And finally, and this is where the steps change, end it all with either the major sixth or the major seventh chord of the scale. All of the chord progressions used in this video were written in under a minute, using these guidelines. And although they aren't the only way you can write an effective chord progression, they're certainly useful to have in your armament as a composer, especially when you're just starting out or if you're struggling with writer's block. So thanks for watching this video. There are detailed notes on everything we discussed in the description of the video in case you'd like to copy and paste them for future reference. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. If there's anything else you'd like to see in future videos, just let me know in the comments. But for now, have a great day and keep on writing.